Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Hey, so... When I... Um, when our kids were growing up, uh, we kind of told our kids, you're not, you're not going to like what I'm about to say, probably, but no problem. <laughs> when our kids were growing up, we told our kids something along, along this line. Hey, if, um, if somebody you know, picks on you, you should, you know, just ignore them and go on. If somebody hits you, you know, just kind of turn the other cheek and, and, and let it, you know, just move on, go on. If someone kind of harasses you the best you can, kind of ignore it and go on. But, if somebody keeps harassing you, if somebody repeatedly punches you, if somebody keeps hounding you, I give you 100% permission to take your fist, close it as tight as you can, to cock it back as far as you can go, and aim right there. Right? So you may not like it. I'm just saying that in the nose, as hard as you can, We'll take care of a lot of people. Here, here's what I know, guys. I know that within every man, there is a warrior heart. And maybe that looks different, right? So not everybody's a fighter. I, I get that. But every man has like this desire to accomplish something. He has this desire to overcome. He has this desire to... You know, even I think Rock, our, our, our oldest, who's on his phone right now, he, um, you know, he did the little, oh, he's taking notes, he did the Lego deal. And crazy Lego. He could, like, put stuff together, insane, and, like, he would build stuff, amazing stuff. And so maybe it looks different for different people, but within every guy, there's, like, this fighter, warrior, I have to figure something out, I have to accomplish something. Maybe it's sports, competitive, maybe it's wrestling or martial arts, maybe in the UP it's hunting. I don't know why we need 50 guns to kill one deer, but just the same, we do. Right, guys? Right? And so I, your guy will be, a guy being is blind, and I know girls hunt too, don't misunderstand me, but this is Father's Day. I can't even get my, speaking of, so I, I cut myself on Friday. Can you guys see that? Four stitches. Four, yeah, right there. And um, we were tearing down this wall in the, in the kids' nurse, in the new nursery area. And I was sledge. I went, they did the hammer. I was, I was going against the way I should go with the sledgehammer, and I, I went back and I went for that wall, and, and I, and that the sledgehammer went through kind of the hole, and my finger went into the brick. I know. So this is what's funny, right? So how many of the girls were like, "Ouch"? As a guy, I'm like, "Dude, this is sweet." <laughs> oh, this is just cool, man. They're like, I'm like peeling it back. Look at this. You see the flesh. It was really cool. Yeah. So I had to, they told me after talking to three people to go to the doctor and get stitches. Uh, Dr. Cassetti, she's an amazing doctor. You guys know Dr. Cassetti? Great, yeah, 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 yeah. Great lady. She's funny too. And so we're there and I, and I said, Dr. Cassetti, here's the deal. I'm a guy and I, and, and I want my scar. <laughs> so whatever you do, if you've got a stitch, it's stitched in such a way that I want the biggest scar possible. Because I don't want people saying to me, you know, like, Pastor, all you ever do is preach and play golf. I don't even play golf, but, like, I want to be able to say, dude, look at this scar. <laughs> and that's my left hand. You should see my right hand, right? But there's within a guy this warrior risk, this fight, this mentality. Again, it might look different for different people, but there is this thing within every male that we want to compete, that, or that we want to win, that we want to help somebody. There's this... You know, I think John Eldred says it this way, something on the lines of, uh, deep in the heart, every man longs for a battle to fight, an adventure to live, and a beauty to rescue. That's good. Warriors, warriors. Ladies, let me talk to you for a moment, if I can help you for just a second. Um, your husbands are, are different than you. That's strange, I know. Uh, and it's more than biological. So let me just kind of help you a little bit. Uh, ladies, guys are wired in such a way that they're supposed to problem solve. 
That's that warrior-esque, fighter, problem-solver. That's part of that DNA of a guy. So ladies, when you, know, when you talk to your husband, and, and, and if you're married and you say something on the lines of, let me tell you about my day, and then as soon as your first problem comes up, he says, well, listen, honey, here's what you have to do. It's not his fault. We understand it, right, guys? Because guys are wired to fix it. And so even after we've been trained for a while, ladies, after we've been trained and we're like, and we've learned to just remain silent and just empathize and listen to about your day, I just want you to know, deep down inside, we're figuring it out. We're like, if you just do this and this, and we're just not telling you. So I'm just saying, guys are different than girls, right, guys? Yes, guys, right? We're different. How do I know this? How do I know within a guy is this warrior, the battle fighting person that's supposed to try to fight a battle, fix something, make something, change something? How do I know that? Because if you look at, if you look at uh, uh, Exodus fifteen three, Exodus fifteen three is talking about after God delivers Israel and all and all these people are like wiped out from Egypt. There's a song that's saying, and in the song, it's about God. It says this, that the Lord is a warrior. Psalm 24, 8 says this, that who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Now, so get this. Guys were created in the image of God. In the likeness of God. One of the first commandments for guys in the Bible was to rule and to reign over. So within a man, there is a God-given fight, DNA, makeup, composure, personality to fight, to win, to be at war, to defend somebody. Because you were created that way by God. Genesis. Now I know some of the ladies are like, yeah, but you know, I like to hunt too and too. I, and I get that. But I have never met a guy, even if they don't want to do anything, but I've never met a guy who in, way, in some way doesn't have this warrior mentality, whether it's through debate or whether it's through overcoming an obstacle, fixing a car, or whatever it might be. But I've also never met a lady who doesn't in some way have this overlying personality of wanting to care for people. And I think Patrick explained it well. So even as, you, even as you might be in different issues, and this is holding up the sermon, ladies are wired to really take care of people. We see that all the time. And there's this sense of taking care of, and guys are wired with this warrior, fight for a battle, fight for someone who's hopeless or in need. As a matter of fact, um, Jesus was called a loving uh, man, and, and he was. Jesus was known as being compassionate, caring. As a matter of fact, he had the kids, and he brought the kids to him all the time, and so we know he is, but Jesus was also defined as a warrior. One time, if you recall, uh, the temple where the people would come and they would, they would buy these sacrifices that they were supposed to give, there was people in the temple that were charging outrageous amounts or saying that the sacrifice was blemish, and so what the people were doing is they were like this over overcharging so Jesus walks in and he says listen guys hey enough's enough and he doesn't did he he walked in and he took the tables and he threw them scripture says and he said my house will not be called a den of thieves but a house of prayer as a matter of fact another time is many of the times that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees I mean he was always combating them and to the one time he says listen man you guys are a brood of vipers you guys are a pit of snakes. You're worse than your ancestors are. Does that sound wimpy to you? Not at all. Revelation, this is awesome, describes Jesus coming back this way. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood. That sounds kind of cool. Anyway, <laughs> he's dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with a, which to strike down the nations. 
He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the furry of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We serve a mighty, mighty warrior God who also put within men a mighty, mighty heart as a warrior. So how do, you, how do you deal with that? Jesus being the greatest servant, the greatest warrior. I think here's our challenge, God. Our challenge is to find out what is God calling me to fight for? What is God, what, what's the battle that God has made for me? What is the, what is the, the situation he's calling me to battle for? What is the situation he raised me up for? What is, what, who, or what, or what, what city, what situation? As a matter of fact, one of the difficult passages for me is found in Ezekiel twenty two thirty, And Jerusalem is just a mess. They're falling apart. People are sinning and doing whatever they want to. God says this. He says this. Hey, I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and who would stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. And listen to what God said. But I found none. As a guy, that kind of frightens me a little bit. Because I want to say, how many times has God tried to raise me up? How many times has God said to me, Jason, listen, I want you to stand in the gap for this person. Or Jason, I want you to stand in the gap for this need. Or Jason, I want you to serve over in this place. And how many times have I said, God, man, I just got a lot on my plate and I have too much stuff to do. And, and, and I've missed standing in the gap on someone's fighting for someone. But that makes me a little bit nervous. The fact is, is that, guys, we are alive today because God has a fight for you. Do you believe it? Young men, you are alive today because God has a fight for you. There is someone that God is raising up that he's asking you to defend, to help, to build up, to encourage. Nehemiah as he looked at the walls of Jerusalem. He said this to the guys, will you guys not fight? Will you guys not fight? He said this, if you can't fight for yourself, fight for your kids. Fight for your families. Fight for your future. Is there not a cause? Is there not something to stand up for? And it was out of that that the men said, yes, we will fight. And they started building the temple. And at times they had a sword in one hand and the bricks in the other. Because there was a war to be fought. There was a battle to be won. Guys, we love a good argument. We love a good fight. We love a good battle. Even when I was growing up, um, Hulk Hogan, right? Hulk Hogan, remember Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan, wrestler Hulk Hogan, you know, ripped the shirt off, and as he's down at the lowest part getting pinned, his little finger starts waving, and he's like, right? Remember Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Hulk Hogan used to do his little talks, and, and one of them, he, he had like, I forget what, the Hulk Maniacs. The Hulkamaniacs, whoo! And he would, he took this, this cup and he broke about two to three eggs, raw eggs, and he gulped them. So what did I do in sixth grade? Hulkamaniac! Gulp, oh yeah, and I guess it's bad for you maybe, right? It could be some, like, I don't know, who knew? Another one that was huge for me uh, growing up was, um, oh yeah, yeah. Rocky. Fire the tigers, the fill of the fire. I used to, remember the cassette decks? Little Walkman things, and you put your cassette in there. Some of you guys don't know what they are, but anyway, it's a long story. And so I would run, I would run in the middle of winter time, right? 
mom and dad are here. And, and, and I would run thinking with a tape going, oh, yeah, the time. And it's like, if Rocky can do it, I can do it. But one of my favorite champions of growing up, a guy by the name of Bruce Lee. Yeah. Ah, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee could, like, enter the dragon. He'd Right? Bruce Lee. Yes. Because of Bruce Lee, I took Kempo Karate. I'm just saying, guys, maybe we're not fighters, fighters, but there's something within us. We have a cause to fight for, a cause to die for. Guys, if I can encourage you, fight for your marriage. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your kids. Fight for those that don't have a father figure in their life. Guys, fight for them. Is it inconvenient? Absolutely. Does it cost? Yes. Does it cost? Braveheart, right? Mel Gibson, Braveheart. As he's standing before the army, there's this speech. It's one of my favorite speeches because it encourages me. Ah! Fight and you may die. Run and you will live for a while. And on your dying bed, Will you not give up this day for that day and all the days in between for just one chance, for just one opportunity to come back on this day and to stand before your enemies and say to them that while you may take my life, you will not take my freedom, right? Braveheart. I'm just saying, guys, is there not a cause? Is there not a battle worth dying for? And listen, sometimes it's easy to die for stuff. Like when I was in Minneapolis, um, I had, we had someone watching our home. And I slept in my underwear. Anyway, so someone's watching my home, and I heard, we heard like, and they didn't know that we were there. Anyway, I shouldn't even tell you the story. Anyway, here's the deal. It's like 3 in the morning. I hear someone coming into my front, the basement door. So like any good guy, I came out my best Bruce Lee stuff, and I stood behind the door, ready to combat somebody, and, and, ah, and it was me and my underwear and my neighbor. Um, but here's the deal, guys. I think that we're all willing to die for somebody, right? But God calls, or calls us to die for somebody every day. Are you with me? It's easy to want to say, I'll give my life and I'll take a bullet. But God is saying to us, gentlemen, every day will you give your life for somebody? That's a little tougher task, isn't it? So here's where I want to go with this. How do you, how do you fight? How do you fight? There's really two ways. Two ways you can fight. The first one is this. You, you can either swing the punch. Swing the punch or uh, uh, to throw the punch, metaphorically speaking, is that, guys, sometimes we're going to need to stand up for what's right. Sometimes we're going to need to take a stand and say, you know what, for me and my house, this is just how we're going to do it. I don't care who likes it, who doesn't like it. This is the way that we're going. Sometimes, guys, much. Sometimes, guys, we have to stand up for somebody. Sometimes we're going to fight the battle of laziness, or fight the battle of, of, of lust, or fight the battles that we fight every day. So sometimes, guys, we're going to have to just throw the punch. But sometimes, gentlemen, we need to turn the other cheek. Sometimes the battle isn't always ours to fight. Amen? Sometimes God just says, listen, walk away. Just turn the other cheek. Jesus did it a lot, didn't he? I mean, as, as Jesus gets portrayed, or portrayed, as he gets betrayed, he's there in the, the, uh, the garden, and... Uh, Peter's there, the Roman guards all come, and all of a sudden, you know, as again, Jesus 
Peter grabs the sword, he slices off the ear of the Roman guard, and Jesus picks it up and he says, Peter, put away your sword. Jesus, as he's standing, or rather he's on the cross and being crucified, I mean, he allows them to mock him and ridicule and literally kill him because Jesus understood that there was a higher calling to which God has called me for. Could he at any moment had said, host of angels come and set me free? Absolutely. Be understood, you know, at, at this time, at this time, I'm supposed to turn the other cheek. So guys, if I can challenge you this morning, sometimes we got to throw the punch. Sometimes we got to fight the battle. And sometimes we got to turn the cheek. How do you know the difference? How do you know the difference? comes down to one thing, and that's our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Some people think worshiping God is manby, pansy, girl stuff. That's just stupid. We're serving a warrior. Man, and I want to be in a relationship with my leader, with my king, with my God. How do we know when to turn the cheek and when to throw the punch? It comes out of relationship with our God. Samson, who was called to set people free for his whole life, flirted with ladies until finally at the end of his life, he came back to what he was wired for. Samson prayed to the Lord, O sovereign Lord, remember me, O God. Please strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines from my two eyes. You know the story of Samson. Supernatural strength. His whole life, to a large part, was wasted. The last time, his hands against the two pillars, God strengthened me one more time to do what I was born to do. And with all his might, he pushed it, destroyed the Philistines, killed himself in the process. But listen, he lived at that point for what he was born to do. Are we living, guys, for what God has made us to do? The alternative is if you don't live for what God wired you to do, wired you to do, you're going to live for yourself. You're going to live for my wants, my desires, and you're going to argue and you're going to fight, but it's going to be all the wrong arguments and all the wrong fights. You'll find yourself fighting with your boss, fighting over policy, fighting over procedures. Let me just go another route. Some of you have been hurt by guys that thought they had a battle to fight and it was out of rage. Okay, God's not okay with that. And so if I can just say to you, that's a guy that was fallen under sin and he used God's given gift of the warrior -esque in a wrong way. And I know this. I know that my God at some point will deal with those situations. I know he will. Amen? Yeah. Amen. The worship team would come up this morning. I want to pray with the guys in just a little bit. Um, first, I'm going to ask the ushers if they would if they would come. Before we receive our offering and, and um, before we pray for the guys, I want to just I want to talk to a couple of you for a moment. By the way, we do have new buckets, so it'll go really quick. So don't feel pressured to pass it, just take your time as best that you can and we'll work through this little process. So. But if I can get every head bowed, every eye closed this morning, I, I'm just, you know, every week we try to do this and I think today in particular is important. You will really never know the purpose that God has for you as a man or as a woman until you come in alignment with what he's called you to do and called you to be. You will never understand 
the grace that he offers you until you accept his grace applied in your life. If you're here today and maybe you don't have a relationship with God, maybe you, you know, you've maybe you've been religious, maybe you've gone to church, maybe you've you've known about God, but you don't have a personal relationship. You're not starting every day saying, God, man, how do I give this day to you? But today you recognize that the Holy Spirit's here and you want to surrender your life to him. You want to give him full ownership. You want to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today. You want to commit your life and you haven't already been doing so. Would you raise your hand with me? I just want to pray with you. We're not going to embarrass you. I just want to acknowledge that God is working in your life. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You know that you need to give your life this morning to God. You have not done it. Father, we pray, Lord, for each one in this room, um, that you'd restore our hearts to you. Lord, those that don't know you, that aren't living for you, God, would you help them to understand your unconditional love and grace that covers all of our sins. Would you help us to accept the free gift that you give to us of salvation? In Jesus' name.